Let's talk to some guys that qualified for nationals after being in Sacramento at the uh, NCAA West uh, preliminaries. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Brandon Garnica and Cameron Bates of Springville and Spanish Fork, respectively. I, I lived in these cities. We know people in these cities. Yeah. What's up, guys? Congratulations on qualifying and uh, Thank welcome you. to Studio. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, let's start with you, Cameron, in the mm -hmm. Javelin. Uh, you're the all time leader in BYU history. You're headed to nationals. Yeah. Uh, what was your uh, West qualifying like, and uh, what's it like to make nationals again, man? Yeah, no, it, it was good. I was excited about making it in. Um, top six places are in the last flight at nationals, so it was good that I made it into the top six. It wasn't my best performance, but hopefully we're saving that for nationals. What about you, Brandon? Talk to talk to us about uh, about your performance and. and continuing on <laughs> yeah so i was able to qualify in the 10k um top 12 is the qualifying mark out of 48 uh cruised in through 10th so put the least amount of work in and leaving the rest of it for nationals <laughs> what is that like because yeah you don't want your like you said cameron you don't want your best performance per se there but you need to be better than certain people in the field so how do you sort of manage that from a, okay, how hard do I throw this? Right. So I think it's different in the 10K because you can kind of gauge as you're going along. Yeah. So javelin, you're, you just have three attempts, which is half the normal attempts you'd have. So you're going for it in javelin because you can't really like pick and choose where it's going to end up. So I don't, I guess I don't have that benefit that Brandon <laughs> had, but yeah. I just got to chuck this. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, it, um, how was it, by the way, as we look at some of the video, how was yeah. the weather? How was the situation? Oh, no, it was nice. I mean, a couple years ago, we were in Texas A&M, so college station, a lot hotter, Human. more muggy. Yeah. So the weather was great. Um, it was good. It was a good competition. I love throwing there. That's the second time I've been there. So it was good. What's the prep like for something like this? Because obviously you guys, in this program, you guys go in, and you know what this program has done in, in this sport. So you go in with pretty high expectations. Mm -hmm. how, how do you prepare for, for the season, but obviously the end of the season with what you're doing now? Yeah, um, Ed Eystone has really critiqued a nice workout plan for us that involves peaking at nationals. Yeah. Um, but a little bit of that also is about qualifying, because that's a big thing. You can't peak at nationals if you don't go. So a lot of our work is... Um, tapering for the national meet and then going into that 10k as smooth as possible and feeling as best as we can so that way we can get through and go to nationals. So you and Casey Kling qualified right in the 10k? Yeah. What's what's the goal at nationals now in, in, in a race that BYU has had great success in? Mm -hmm. My personal goal is the podium uh, but then the, my big hairy goal is top five. Um, I really want to go out with a bang for my senior year and I think top five is is if everything goes right and I'm feeling amazing then that's what I want to hit. Ranked 11, so you certainly have a shot, right? Um, a couple years ago, I believe Connor Mance won this, right? Uh, yeah. National Championship. Obviously, the cross country um, is strong at BYU. The distance is strong. What's it like to sort of be a part of the program where it's like, hey, we're expected to be awesome? Um, it's nice just knowing that you have teammates that have been at that caliber, uh, especially Connor Mance. He's won the NCAA cross country championship twice. Yep. And then Clayton Young actually won back in 2019 at Austin, where we're going to this year. So Good vibes. Um, there's good vibes going into this meet, <laughs> and I'm sure Ed is hoping that we can replicate that again this year. Um, but it, it, it gives a lot of confidence to me that uh, I've had the same workouts with these athletes, and that I know that it's, the potential is there. So. All right, so Cameron, we were, we were talking, uh, you're good friends with, with Jaron Hall. You've known mm -hmm. the Hall family for a really long time, went to school. Yeah. And so if you had to throw a football, or Jaron had to throw a javelin, who would do a better job? Oh, man. We've talked about this a lot. <laughs> um, no, we've had this, like, ongoing conversation about doing a football toss. Like, I always backed him up. Well, I didn't back him up. I was a quarterback JV and stuff growing up. Okay. So I, I know how to throw a football. It's not a pretty spiral or anything. <laughs> but I like to think uh, my football toss would look better than his javelin toss. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I like that. I yeah. like that. What's your goal at Nationals? You're ranked seventh in the country right now. You certainly yeah. have a chance to be on the podium right. as well. Um, yeah, the goal is to win. In Javelin, all of us are within a couple meters of each other, so it's going to come down to who has the best day. So for me, I just if I have, like we were talking about in break, if I have my good meet at Nationals, I have a shot to win, so that's going to be the goal. And then if you don't reach that, you'll end up somewhere you know, among the, the top. So that's the goal. Does humidity in Austin yeah. uh, next weekend affect uh, javelin in a significant um, way? I don't think it affects like the throw or your grip itself. Or anything? No, not really. What it affects is just how fatigued you feel. Mm -hmm. So, probably hit the sauna a few times this week, get myself acclimated as much as I can, and then just go for it. So, we had to meet there earlier in uh, March, I think, this year. So, been out there once, feeling comfortable. So, just give it a go. Did Did you go to that as well, Brandon? That 
that meet at Texas? No. But a couple – have you been there before? Yeah. Yes, I've been there back in 2019. 19, okay. So you guys have been on the track, you know. Right. Okay, yeah. And it's interesting because it's nice view of downtown there. It's yeah, it's nice beautiful. Nice campus, yeah. That's that'll, cool. That'll be fun. So, Brandon, you're, you're a twin, is that right? That's correct, so, yeah. Yeah, so you have a brother that runs at Utah State, is that right? Yeah, I actually have two. I have a younger and my twin up there. Oh, okay. So, all right, so, so a twin. Now, I'm not a twin, but my dad is a twin. So I, I know – I know how close twins are. It, was it was it was it difficult to go to two different places after spending? I'm going to assume as close as twins usually are your entire life to that point together. Yeah, it, it wasn't that difficult. Um, I think my brother and I are fraternal twins, so we're not as connected ah, as identical twins. Gotcha. Like the set of twins we have on the team, which is Davin and Creed Thompson yeah. and uh, Jacob and Garrett Stanford. Those guys are twins as twins can be uh, but my brother and I are more kind of individual people that were born on the same day as I would say but yeah it wasn't that hard hey at least you always at least you always have a uh, a training partner right if you need it yeah yeah <laughs> the Thompsons you want to go does yeah, he, by the go. way does he do the same events that you do he does yeah he also does long distance and cross country oh nice who's older I am okay oh yeah. older. but he has the leadership but he's taller so he's got <laughs> that oh, okay would you rather be older or taller uh I'd be older oh yeah. okay do you have um, ambitions after to continue doing this? Yeah, I'd love to go pro. Um, right now, I don't have any set up, uh, but I will probably continue still running and do some road races with Connor Mance in the future. Awesome. That's cool. And then, Cameron, do you want to keep doing this after? Is there a hope there? Yeah. No, so next year's the Olympic year. It's my last year of eligibility, so the plan is to uh, try and make that Olympic team. I was 14th, I think, at the 2020 trial, so up my standing there and then just see after college what you know what's in store for me so what's that like to go to the trials and like be top 15 like that no it was cool it was it was kind of surreal because i went onto the practice track and i was warming up before i threw and i was running next to like justin gatlin and guys i've seen on tv and i was like oh my gosh like i'm taller than him one and two like <laughs> it's just crazy to see him in real life and so it was a cool experience so hopefully next time we go back and more prepared and can do a little bit better. You know. We had Sierra on the show last week talking with her from Sacramento. Um, and we were talking to her about the, the, the jump to Big 12 and, and, you know, the program going to that. W what, what's your guys' thoughts on, on the program making that jump? I'll let you go. I guess you're not going to be here. but Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to yep. call or, uh, compete in it. But I know that Ed has put a, put a big importance on it because we can be one of the first teams that could actually win a Big 12 title. Um, in BYU, uh, we have a really good shot uh, at doing that. We have a really deep cross-country team, and we have a really amazing track team in the spring. Um, but that's, he seems really confident, and he wants to do that. And so I, we're looking forward to that. I know the younger guys below me are really excited to go out and do a conference championship and, and win some 5K, 10K, steeple, and 1500s, and 800s. Yeah. I think cross-country will be the first to win it. Uh, I think on the calendar, it's first. Uh, it's uh, our, this is a this is a cross country school. Yeah, you know what I'm this is a track school. Like, there's a lot of sports. I kid, uh, but yeah, cross country is going to bring it right away. Mm -hmm. Iowa State's been pretty good. Oklahoma yep. State's been pretty good, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. out of the game, man. Out of the game. Who's a better golfer between you and Jaren? By the way, oh. <laughs> we actually have a. Uh, once he's done with OTAs, we're going to have a tournament between me, him, and a couple of our buddies. So. I'll let you know in a month or two. <laughs> but right as it stands right now, he practices more than I do, so probably him. Y right yes, now. and for some reason, quarterbacks are good. They are. Man. Maybe it's you being a former quarterback. Yeah, well, I can hit it far, it's just not straight. So, <laughs> <laughs> got to work the kinks out. You have, so. you have any good Jaron stories since you grew up with him? Uh, Anything that he would be okay with you? Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> shoot. Um, no, I mean just classic stuff, hanging out with the the boys and stuff, but. When it comes to athletics, he was just always, you know, whether it was basketball or football or whatever it was, just the same poised guy you get, you see now. Is the, it's the way it's always been. So, always been that leader, and so it was cool to grow up with him and some of my other buddies. And now, all playing college sports, professional sports, it's been kind of cool to see. But yeah, he's for sure. He's always been that guy, definitely. Uh, that's what I was gonna ask. Was he always like? Dialed uh, always, in, he's yeah. very locked in. Kalen got him locked in from when he was a little guy. Yep, so. Kalen's very <laughs> right. the whole family. Right? Absolutely, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, Brandon and Cameron, uh, congratulations and best of luck at Nationals next week in Austin. Thank Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. All Appreciate the karma guys. we can give you, we give you. Good <laughs> luck. Appreciate it. We'll